Hello everybody, Sticks here with the Toka Minorities bringing you another deck on Pokemon TCGO and today I'm bringing you a deck that combines forces from the previous two sets, those being Mega Audino EX and Eveltal Break from Steam Siege. And before I get into the deck, just a reminder that if you like this video or found it helpful, please leave a like, drop a comment, and maybe subscribe, it helps us out a lot and lets us do more for you guys. Now, as for the question of the day, I was looking at this deck and thinking about how it really relies on bench damage to be most effective and thinking well what deck does bench damage usually do the best against and that was night march and that led me into thinking hmm i hate playing night march so i might as well ask you guys what is the deck you hate playing against the most i mean honestly i have wow voice crack i am growing up at some point honestly I don't mind playing Night March that much anymore just because I know I've, I've learned how to play around it and a lot of the decks I use have good matchups against Night March. So I would have to say the deck I hate playing against the most is more than likely Trevenant Break just because it gets that turn one item lock, which is just so annoying. And I know that there are other item lock strategies like Vile Plume, but in against those type of decks, if they don't go first, then you have a chance. Oh, well, I guess that's the same with trevenant break but if vile plume it takes a little bit more for them to get going whereas with trevenant break it all it requires is a wally to get that first turn item lock so let me know in the comment section what is the deck you hate to play against the most anyway on to the deck that you clicked on this video for this is centered around eveltal break like i said with the baleful knight I, I i don't even know what baleful means somebody please leave a comment in the comment section below i'm probably just missing something completely obvious but either way baleful knight for three darkness energies so basically knight spear from the old dark eye does 120 damage and this does 30 damage to each of your opponent's benched pokemon that has any damage on it now this is a really really good attack but the problem is the things that were really good at spreading around bench damage like bats, fortress, those type of things all got rotated out and I wanted to try to bring you guys a deck that works in the new standard at the request of a couple people. So I was trying to think what possibly could go with the Veltal Break to where it would be a pretty solid deck and what gets good bench damage and stuff like that. And I decided to go with something that I previously called Night Spear on steroids and that is Mega Audino EX with Magical Symphony. 110 and if you played a supporter card from your hand during this turn this attack does 50 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So these two combined very very nicely. Mega Audino gets the damage out there for Eveltal break to take advantage of and I would like to really preface this by saying I was kind of at odds trying to figure out what type of deck I can do with the Eveltal break I mean I tried initially to make an all dark version of it with the Absol from Roaring Skies being able to move three damage counters from one Pokemon to another thinking that that would work and it it sort of did but Unfortunately, with cards like AZ and Super Scoop Up both being rotated out, I had no way of using Absol multiple times, so that that fell through a little bit. I still might do a deck profile on it later if something comes out to where I will be able to use that more effectively, but I was still trying to think of what type of deck I could use that would, or what partner I could use with Eveltal Break that would make it most effective. And I came across a deck that I had held on to for a little while that was a Mega Audino Eveltal deck. And I was looking at it and decided that, you know what, I could change around a few cards, put in a couple Eveltal Breaks, change around the energy and go from there. And that's what I did. And this deck is actually really, really fun to use. So anyway, let's just go ahead and get right into the deck. Sorry for the entire story of my life before that. I just wanted to let you guys know what type of thought process went into combining these two Pokemon that you normally wouldn't think would go together. Anyway, I'm running 3-3 of Audino and Mega Audino just because, I mean, they're half of the main attacker. I would have to say that they are actually the main attacker of this deck, even though I wanted to center it around Eveltal Break. Just that Eveltal needs so much prep, prep and help from Mega Audino in order to function properly. So I'd have to say that Mega Audino is the main attacker. So I'm running three, three of those. Running two Shaman for draw support just because Shaman is Shaman is Shaman. I say that every single time. You're probably tired of me saying that. But I mean, setup is the best ability in the entire game. 
Then I am also running 3-2 of Eveltal and Eveltal Break now. I am running 3-2 because one of these Eveltals I actually want to be starting with in order to Oblivion Wing to start setting up Audinos and potentially an Eveltal Break on the bench. So that's why I'm running 3-2 instead of 3-3. And then a 2-2 of Zorua and Zorark. These guys kind of have heavy retreat costs and Mega Audino having a 3 retreat cost. So I don't want to have to pay those retreat costs. And if I'm running Dark already with DCEs, I might as well throw Zora and Zorark in there because these guys are both great attackers. And also, I mean, having the stand in and retreat is amazing to have. I'm also running one Hoopa because I'm running an e a Mega EX deck. So might as well throw a Hoopa in there, be able to search out a couple of these in a Shaman it with one ultra ball and now on to the items i'm running four of the max elixir to hopefully power up audino and eveltal and i mean even potentially zora for later but max elixir almost always goes to an audino ex or an eveltal ex the problem with mega with the uh, not mega eveltal wow that would be absolutely insane the problem with eveltal break is that it requires three darkness energy so i can't just throw a darkness and a dce onto it i have to have three darkness which can be worked around but it's still just a little bit annoying max elixir can help with that quite a bit i'm also running one mega turbo just to get a mega audino powered up in one turn if i need it uh this is definitely a card that you can do without i just decided to throw it in there just because it can help in some situations and more often than not you're going to have a dark energy in the discard pile i'm also running one super rod to get some stuff back in case i overextend myself or have to discard a bunch of Mega Audino, Zorark, or Eveltal Break with a Juno, or Sycamore, I guess, in this deck, or something like that. I'm also running four Ultra Ball to get everything out, four VS Seeker to reuse my supporters, and then three Trainer's Mail. I know I almost always want to use four, but in this case, I kind of wanted to try to slip in the Mega Turbo, so I got rid of one of the Trainer's Mail. Again, that is completely up to you guys, and I encourage you to try that for yourself. On to the supporter list, running one Hex Maniac for those stupid safeguard Pokemon and potentially like Greninja Break and stuff like that. And really, Hex Maniac is just a phenomenal card for disrupting your opponent and buying you another turn, which you occasionally will need with this deck. Running one Lysander, just because Lysander is amazing and also can help spread the damage around to where you can get the most use out of Baleful Knight. And then a 4-2 of N and Sycamore. Like I have said, I have been leaning more towards this line of N and Sycamore because I like the guaranteed draw support of Sycamore more than the shuffle into your deck and draw from N. But I also think N is a very, very, very valuable card to have. And I actually mean that figuratively and literally because N is probably the most, val actually it is the most valuable full art at the time. Well, at the, yeah. As it stands now, N is the most valuable full art. I don't know what I was saying. I apologize for stumbling on my words, but Sycamore's draw power is just too good to pass up, especially now that you need uh, consistency and you need speed in almost all of your decks to be successful. As for the stadium, I was, I don't know, I was kind of wondering what type of stadium could go well with this deck and I ultimately just decided on Skyfield as kind of a cop out. I mean, I could run Reverse Valley for the Eveltal Break. I could run, actually, I don't know what else I could run. Maybe Parallel City because none of my cards are affected by it. But I ultimately just decided on Skyfield because that way I can play down my Audinos, play down the Shaman, play down the Zoroa, play down the Hoopa, and really not necessarily have to worry too much about conserving bench space just because, I mean, there are a bunch of basic Pokemon that you want to play in this deck, and having those eight bench spots is invaluable, especially if your opponent discards your Skyfield. Then you can just immediately get rid of, like, the Shaman and the Hoopa, which are two things that you wouldn't want on the bench anyway, and you can have only valuable things on the bench so that's why I decided to go with Skyfield you can definitely try something else for yourself on for on on for oh me is good at English on to the Pokemon tools running three Audino spirit links really only need to run three because you're running three mega Audinos running two float stones for the Zora and Zoroark and because I don't want to have one of them prized and just be kind of screwed and then as for the energy I'm running three DCE and seven darkness energy in the original deck when it was just Eveltal and Mega Audino, I think the count was four DCEs and six Darkness Energy or something like that. 
I decided to switch it up a little bit because Eval Tall Break does need more darkness energy, and also I can usually get a DCE out for my Mega Audino, but sometimes I can't, so it does bite me in the butt. Uh, I encourage you to try out your own energy line for this deck. I just decided to go with 3 and 7 because that seemed to work best for me in practice. But anyway, I'm done rambling. Let's just go ahead and see this deck in action. Alrighty, we have found one against a perfect Phoenix who also seems to be running a dark deck. I am curious to see what type of pure dark deck he's running, but that means we do not have to worry about Shaman, meaning that my opponent, once he plays his supporter, that will be the only draw support for the turn. You know, unless I'm thinking, unless I'm missing some type of dark Pokemon that can let you draw cards, but I don't think I am. I really think I actually have it together. We do get to go first, and that is phenomenal for this deck. I mean, this deck actually doesn't mind too much going second, just because you can potentially Oblivion Wing first turn if you get the right setup. But either way, we do get to go first, and I much prefer that. And honestly, I think those Darkrai Sleeves are so cool, and we actually start with a pretty great for, uh, first hand. I mean, I have the Eveltal as a starter, I have the Audino on the bench to Oblivion Wing 2 and Max Elixir 2 and stuff like that. I have Float Stones to get this guy out of the active. The only thing is, I would kind of want to have one Zorua to be able to go ahead and throw a float stone on while I have it and okay this looks like a this looks like a Darkrai yeah this looks like a well this is obviously a Darkrai EX deck and ooh I even get an Ultra Ball so what I think I'm gonna go ahead and do is Ultra Ball get rid of the N and one of the float stones to grab probably hmm do I want to grab yeah I think I'm just gonna grab the Zorua like I said to be able to just slap the float stone onto it Play the Hoopa to get a Shaman and another Audino, more than likely. Or I might just end, just to conserve bench space. And yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do. I, I like that play a little bit better. And okay, I even get a Skyfield. Actually, well, I mean, I could have played the Hoopa in the end. Oh well. Uh, I am just going to go ahead and max Elixir. Don't get anything. Woo, that is unfortunate. But I'll just play the Dark Energy there. And oh, my opponent just scoops. Well... Okay, um, I didn't have that good of a start. <laughs> at least I didn't think I did, but either way, I mean, I was just going to pass the turn at that point and then just start going from there with the Skyfield and the Sycamore next turn. So, I mean, I was in a pretty solid position to start with, but that obviously doesn't count, so let's just go ahead and try to find another match with this deck. Alrighty, we have found another hopefully better match against a Knack Crack Freak. Was it? I how you say it, maybe? I don't know. But either way, running a fighting deck, so... Ooh, looks like Mega Audino will have a little bit of trouble, especially... Yeah, this looks like a Garchomp deck, so... Mega Audino's gonna have a little bit of trouble. Uh, luckily, I start with a pretty decent hand. As long as I can get an Eveltal Break going, then I think I will actually have the advantage in this match, but... Oh, this is perfect. I even get, okay, get a, go ahead and put the float stone on the Zorua, go ahead and Ultra Ball. I want to hold on to the Zoroark. I could very easily have Ultra Balled it away, but I have the ability to just go ahead and get more darkness energy into the discard pile at that point for Oblivion Wing later, which is what's going to be my ultimate strategy. So I think I'm just going to Ultra Ball for a shame at this point. Again, don't want to go for the Hoopa right now just because of the, I guess because of the bench space and... Okay, so I just draw a bunch of energy. Well, that's unfortunate. <clears throat> Sorry about that. But what I can do next turn is me uh, Mega Evolve and go from there. My opponent red cards me. You know what? I actually don't mind that that much. Well, I especially don't mind that now because I I think I win. I mean, well, ass I mean, assuming my opponent doesn't get uh, something on the bench or doesn't get a Focus Ash or something like that, but... I can actually go ahead and Magical Symphony next turn, which will knock out the Gibble, and my opponent wasn't playing anything down. I don't... Wow, my opponent is not playing any Pokemon onto the bench, and no... Okay, there's the Ultra Ball, so we will see a Pokemon onto the bench, which will be a bit unfortunate for us, but... Alright, my opponent does have the Shaman. Um, well, at least I can get 50 damage off on it, which isn't the end of the world, or at least... Oh, I guess I'm assuming that I'm going to draw a supporter, which is not a guarantee at all. Um, I do get a Max Elixir. 
Okay, so what I think I'm going to go ahead and do is just play the DCE onto the Audino, play the Mega Audino there, go ahead and retreat into the Mega Audino on the bench, and I could Ultra Ball for a Shaman. I'm really tempted to make a much more risky play. Well, I mean, that is assuming Zorua ever retreats, but I, I think I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, never mind, backfires on me. I was going to try to go ahead and get any belts all powered up on the bench, but because I was going to take a single prize anyway. But it backfired because Max Elixir did not hit anything. And okay, so I'm in an excellent, excellent position at this point. And yeah, I was in such an excellent position that my opponent just went ahead and forfeited because what I could have done next turn is probably Ultra Balled for the other Shaman just to draw some more cards, knock out his Shaman in one hit, and get 50 damage on something on the bench while powering up the Eveltal. So I was in a great, great position. I don't think. I mean, obviously Garchomp could have just started coming in and Okoing my Mega Audinos, but the thing is, the prize trade would have already been in my favor because I would have taken two to three prizes at that point, and I would have just started attacking with Eveltal Break, which would have put me in a fantastic position, especially with that resistance, but you know what? I'm going to see if we can try to go one for three and get a good match again. Alrighty, we have found another... Hopefully this will be the final match against, uh, what was that, like Anti Schwa or something like that? With a Water and Steel deck, so this is probably a Greninja Break deck. Um, well, more than likely anyway. I have been seeing a lot of like just an Articuno Registeel deck, just completely based around those two running around. So I'm wondering if like a YouTuber did a video with those guys or something. But either way, uh, we do start with a Zoroa that is pretty... Um, actually, you know what? I'm kind of hesitant to say this is a pretty good starting hand because unless I get an Ultra Ball or something, it's not a very good starting hand because if I get a Sycamore, I will just have to discard away the Eveltal and the Eveltal Break and the Mega Audino and the Super Rod, which is not something I want to do. I want to discard those guys first, then use the Super Rod to put them back into the deck and then go for the Sycamore, but... If I just have to uh, discard all three of those, then those are all cards that I just will... Oh, that is brutal. That is brutal. Uh, but, I mean, on the bright side, I do draw an N instead of a Sycamore, so that's, I guess, something I can hang my hat on. And, okay, this looks to not be a Greninja Brick deck. So I think... You know what? I think it is that other... It's that Articuno Registeel deck that I've been seeing a lot. So that means that... Eveltal Break will actually be very phenomenal because it can one-shot the Articunos and Regis... Well, not Registeels, Reg Ices, I'm sorry, uh, and go from there. But one thing that will be annoying is that this deck relies on bench damage and Rough Seas just kind of destroys all of my bench damage that I could possibly have. I mean, I can get like one or two or three or something like that. Well, only two depending on what happens. Uh, but I do get, okay, get a Spirit Link on the Audino. Can I hit a Max Elixir? No. Wow, my luck with these guys is not very good today. But, hmm. So what I think, what I think I'm going to go ahead and do is just manually retreat into the Eveltal. That way, in case the Zorua gets, or in case something gets put to sleep, I can potentially evolve the Eveltal and then stand in and retreat with the Zoroark. I basically... I just don't want my Zora put to sleep, and okay, my opponent Bridget's. Well, that means that my Mind Jack will be powered up, which is definitely an option for next turn. I will, unfortunately, I think have to end because I don't have a Sycamore in the discard pile. So, okay, my opponent will just Chilling Sigh, and that is exactly why I decided to retreat the Zora. I mean, to be fair, I didn't necessarily need to because I had the Zorok in hand that will evolve and get rid of the status conditions. So, okay, I'm in an interesting position right now. What I can do is go ahead and evolve the Zorark, put the Darkness onto the Veltal. I think I'm going to go ahead and start doing that just to power up Audino and potentially another Veltal if I can draw that. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and play the other Audino on the bench and then draw into six more cards. Um, okay. So this is interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and max elixir maybe. No, wow. I am, think, I think 0 for three on max elixirs this live or maybe like one for four or something. But either way, just gonna go ahead and oblivion wing, get some damage on the Articuno, put the energy onto the Audino and go from there. Uh, I think my Skyfield will be definitely, um, 
will be definitely handy in this match because I mean look at that rough seas will come in and just get rid of all the damage I had at all so I could I could cry right now just because I got all that damage and now it's just going to go away but really this is actually kind of a bad matchup especially if my couple Skyfield are prized which when I was looking through the deck I know I didn't look extensively but I didn't see them so there's a very good chance that both of them are prized so I'm a little bit worried about that um, I do stay asleep it's not a big deal if, unless I can get a float stone and okay so I get a sycamore which is a fantastic top deck um, but what I think I'm gonna do is go ahead and super rod to put the Zorua back in and then just sycamore away my hand I don't need that last Audino I really don't think the Hoopa will be of too much help this game and actually that works doubly perfect because what I can do is go ahead and put the DCE onto the Ardino, play the e Veltal break there, put the Float Stone onto the Zoroark, I think. Um, actually, you know what, for now, we're just going to go ahead and Ultra Ball, get rid of the e Veltal and the Audino Spirit Link to get a Mega Audino because I think I'm going to want to start attacking with that guy this turn just to start putting the pressure on my opponent and start getting some bench damage going instead of... Yeah, I actually like this play a lot better as opposed to just Oblivion winging again and doing nothing as my opponent just powers up a triage. I want to put the pressure on him so instead of him putting the pressure on me. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and put, yeah, 110 on the Articuno and 50 on the Regice. I know that won't really... Well, it will matter for the Articuno. The damage is nice because even if he does, well, when he does, heal 30 from the Rough Seas, I can just go ahead and Magical Symphony once again and knock him out and also keep the damage on the Registeel. I mean, he will be able to get down to 20 damage, but I just have to keep stacking the damage on one Pokemon. Unfortunately, I can't spread it out thanks to that stupid Rough Seas, but I'm not going to knock Rough Seas too much. I do love that card, and that is exactly why you run it in the type of deck that my opponent is using because especially against decks that rely on bench sniping damage you can just almost completely eliminate it with the rough seas especially because the da the attacks that do bench damage aren't often aren't that often that strong because i mean 110 is probably 110 and 120 are the two strongest bench sniping attacks that i think i've seen and okay so i get a hand that i can definitely work with i'm wondering if i want to go ahead and try to get another Zorark maybe um never mind my opponent okay who plays red card in that deck uh, I, I mean I, I don't get it I don't get why people are just starting to run random red cards in some decks I mean it's in some decks it makes sense but I mean it's like running the random enhanced hammer and crushing hammer I don't get why people just kind of slap it into decks I mean there's so many more cards that you could use for consistency I mean like my opponent could be could have running, been running like four max elixirs or a mana fee or something like that that would help the deck and okay just goes for a triage haha <laughs> you know what I'm not even gonna say that that was luck I'm saying that is justice the game seeing that it was dumb that my opponent was running a random red card and just deciding to go ahead and yeah give them a give them zero heads on that actually that was completely that was completely luck I apologize but what I can do is go ahead and end my opponent will get one more card but I want to save my Sycamore and my Eveltal break. I was hoping to get another Eveltal that I could play down onto the bench, but unfortunately it looks like discarding that one earlier is going to bite me in the butt a little bit. And wow, I still can't get a single Max Elixir. That is that is frustrating to say the least. Um, I do get another Float Stone, which I mean, I guess I can just slap onto Shaman or something like that. But on the bright side, I will be able to knock out this Articuno this turn. Go ahead and Magical Symphony get some damage onto the Regice. I do need to start powering up my Eveltal break just because I mean once my opponent starts well once my opponent starts getting more stuff powered up Eveltal break can start knocking them out in one hit. Granted I won't get the bench damage that I really do like but I think the knocks knockouts in one hit I mean assuming no fighting fury belt will be a lot more handy and I do need to be careful with this guy though because it will take a couple turns to power him up to say the least. But at the same time, getting those one-hit knockouts is worth it. Never mind, it looks like I won't have to be that careful with it because my opponent just forfeits. That is fantastic. Um, I mean, I guess I just was able to put the pressure on and keep the pedal to the the figurative pedal to the metal a little too much for my opponent. Granted, that three 
all the three tails with triage kind of hurt to where my Mega Audino was still almost completely powered up and I got rid of all his energy. But either way, I mean, unfortunately, I didn't get a Shoffy Veltal break that much. Actually, I don't think I got to show it off at all. But this is the type of deck you would want to use it in. And thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and try it for yourself. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.